Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I'm beginning a monthly series focused on some of the pivotal moments in music history. To start things off, we're looking at my birth month, July. It's time for Daddy to make some funny. That's right, Room Sixers. It's my birthday. But don't worry, if you didn't get me anything, you can make it up to me by watching this video ten times in a row. Now, even though I'm blessed with wisdom glitter, that doesn't mean I've been around for the entire history of music. Thankfully, the interwebs is a veritable treasure trove of useless information. Starting things off on July 1st, the American Top 40 debuts in 1970 featuring the immortal Casey Kasem. No, really, I think the guy's a vampire. Moving on to July 2nd in 1979, Sony introduces the Walkman portable cassette player by selling 385 million over 30 years, and teens have been ignoring adults ever since. In 1988, Michael Jackson makes history with five number ones from the same album, Bad. On July 3rd in 2005, Live 8 concerts take place around the world to draw attention to poverty in Africa. While the U.S. was celebrating their independence, Britain had two famous weddings on July 4th. Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne got married in 1982, and David and Victoria Posh Spice Beckham got married in 1999. Jumping to July 6th, John Lennon and Paul McCartney met for the first time at a church picnic, where Lennon played two songs and Paul showed him how to tune his guitar. Fans of the Beatles and in-tune music everywhere rejoiced. July 7th was a busy day for music history. Organized by former U.S. Vice President Al Gore, yes, really, in 2007, Live Earth concerts were performed in eight cities with acts like The Police and Madonna. Earlier in 1984, Bruce Springsteen's song Born in the USA hit number one in the U.S. for an amazing 139 weeks. Things got really crazy in 1971 when some 3,000 fans caused chaos at the wedding of Bjorn and Agnetha from Swedish supergroup ABBA. Craziest part? A police horse stood on the bride's foot. We move from a wedding party to a sad ending. On July 9th in 1995, Jerry Garcia played with the Grateful Dead for the last time due to poor health. On the other hand, Bill Haley and the Comets would change rock and roll history with the genre's very first number one song, Rock Around the Clock. Coinciding with the Apollo moon landing in 1969, David Bowie released Space Oddity on July 11th. The next day, and three years later, I was born. Guess that explains why my mom always called me a space cadet. On July 13th in 1985, the band Status Quo opened Live Aid, taking place in London and Philadelphia, and watched by 1.5 billion people in 160 countries, making it the biggest live broadcast at the time. Also on the 13th in 1985, the first Bond film theme song goes number one in the U.S., thanks to Duran Duran's A View to a Kill. Six years later, Brian Adams would hit number one in the U.K. with Everything I Do, I Do It For You. The song would hit number one in the U.S. two weeks later. The Rolling Stones also hit number one in the U.K. on July 14th in 1964 with It's All Over Now. Their first U.S. number one satisfaction happened almost a year later on the 10th. July 17th saw a number one hit from Irene Cara's fame in 1982. In 1967 on the same day, the Jimi Hendrix Experience would open for the Monkees in New York City. That must have been some green room. In 1953, on July 18th, something truly world-changing would occur. A young truck driver would pay $3.98 to record two songs as a gift for his mama. That driver's name? Elvis Presley. Oh, in 1992, on the same day, Whitney Houston married Bobby Brown, too. Okay, time's getting short, so I'm going to blast through the rest of these. On July 20th of 1965, Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone released. The next day, but 35 years later, Roger Waters performed The Wall at the site of the Berlin Wall. Furthermore, in 1986, Guns N' Roses would release Appetite for Destruction. Jumping to the 24th of July in 1982, Eye of the Tiger by Survivor would go number one for six weeks. On the 25th in 1969, Neil Young would make his first appearance with Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Four years before that, Bob Dylan would plug in his guitar at the Newport Folk Festival and get booed by his fans. In 1996, on the 27th, the Spice Girls would hit number one in the UK with Wannabe. On the 29th in 1968, Graham Parsons would leave the birds after refusing to enter South Africa to play a concert due to the apartheid in that country at the time. Wrapping up the month on the 31st in 1976, Don't Fear the Reaper would be released by Blue Oyster Cult and Cowbell sales would skyrocket. Hi, pussycat! Finally, here's who was born in July. Bill Withers, Mick Jagger, Debbie Harry, Brian May, Carlos Santana, Cat Stevens, Kate Bush, Jason Orange, Jennifer Lopez, Missy Elliott, 50 Cent, Jessica Simpson, Michelle Williams, and Paloma Faith. Whew! Did I miss any? If so, let me know in the comments. Thanks for hanging in there, and I look forward to doing this next month with you all again. 